Hey guys, Mike Linares here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Today we're talking all about dehydration, which occurs when free water loss exceeds free water intake in the body, which is not the same as hypovolemia, which is hypo meaning low, vol meaning volume, and emia meaning in the blood, a decrease of volume of circulating blood in the body. Now, technically, it's a little bit different, but the causes, the signs and symptoms, as well as the nursing interventions are very similar. Now, let's go over some causes of dehydration. Why does dehydration occur? Fluids can leave your body in many different ways. Basically, your body excretes fluids in different forms. First, let's talk about the two different kinds of fluid loss in the body. Now, we have sensible water loss, which is fluid loss we can measure, like vomiting, urination, or even diarrhea and also insensible water loss, which is water we cannot measure, like with respirations or profound sweating, also called diaphoresis. Now to remember this, we use our nifty acronym VPPS, and our other acronym is DRIVE. As far as VPPS, we do vomiting, pooing, which is diarrhea, peeing, or excretion like urination, most commonly seen with patients on diuretics that drain water from the body and into the potty. Also from sweating, also called diaphoresis, usually from extreme conditions like heat exhaustion or even fever. We also use our acronym DRIED with our patients. So D for diuretics as mentioned before, but also diabetic ketone acidosis. Water leaves the body usually because of polyurea. The body's trying to pee out that high concentration of thick sugar inside the bloodstream. R is for restriction of fluid intake normally when patients don't take in enough fluids. Now, it's usually with our elderly populations who don't drink enough water and don't even have enough muscle mass to hold on the water that they do intake. I is for increased ventilation, also called hyperventilations. E is for excessive sweating, also called diaphoresis. Then D for diabetes insipidus, which I call die, ADH, die, die. It's basically the death of ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. So ADH, remember, adds the H2O to the body. So if ADH is dead, well then water leaves the body and goes into the potty in diabetes insipidus. So don't forget, for diabetes insipidus, we just call this die ADH. Die ADH, die! So how will your patients present with all these low fluids? Well, they're gonna look dried up and flat. So for the cardiac system, you're gonna have low water, so you'll also have low blood pressure, called hypotension. You'll have weak, thready pulses, increased pulse rate called tachycardia, which is usually the first sign and symptom of hypovolemic shock. As mentioned before, decreased blood pressure and often orthostatic hypotension from that low blood pressure upon rapidly standing up. Now, all your veins will be flat and dependent, specifically your neck veins and your hand veins. You'll have decreased central venous pressures, as well as dysrhythmias from that thick concentration of electrolytes. Often we see hyperkalemia, that high potassium, from that hemoconcentration of electrolytes. So you'll always have high and dry lab values. For the respiratory system, it's gonna be harder for the body to transport oxygen with this thick syrupy blood. So you'll have a high respiratory rate called tachypnea and also difficulty breathing called dyspnea. Urine specific gravity is gonna be increased, basically means it's very heavy, it's dark and it's smelly urine. Ooh, you nasty. So the skin will be dry and flat, kind of like leather, and it'll also be tough and rigid. You'll have slow skin turgor. Basically meaning when you pinch the skin, it'll go back to normal very slow and sluggishly. Now, as mentioned before, lab values will be thick like paste from that lack of fluids. So you'll have a high and dry lab value reading, which is basically known as hemoconcentration. So common lab values for dehydration, you'll see high h h known as hemoglobin and hematocrit high electrolyte panels, high serum osmolality, basically very heavy-weighted blood, high or increased blood urea nitrogen, that BUN, which basically measures the kidney function, as well as increased urinary-specific gravity, basically meaning a heavy, dark, smelly urine. Mmm, you nasty still. Now, last but not least, neuromuscularly will be dry and flat. Okay, now that we know what's going on with the patient, what are we going to do about it? So here are some priority nursing interventions. Now, before you start memorizing all your nursing interventions, we always revolve all of our interventions around helping the patient get back to normal. So in this scenario, we want to help our patient get more fluids. So we use our nifty acronym, WATER. 
So W for weight daily, or basically daily weights, to monitor if the patient is gaining fluids or losing fluids, usually is the best indicator is to get a daily weight. A is for administer IV fluids. Now, usually we provide isotonic fluids to get fluid back into the vascular spaces called the veins. Or we can use hypotonic fluid solutions for cellular dehydration. It rehydrates those skinny cells caused by dehydration and turns them into big hefty hippos. So we turn all your cells into big hippos filled with water. That's why we use those hypotonic fluids for hippotonic. T is for teach the client regarding the causes of dehydration. Now, especially when they're on diuretics for their high blood pressure, we want to teach your patients to monitor the signs and symptoms of how they feel related to their daily blood pressure reading, which is a huge indicator to see if they're going to get early dehydration. E is for evaluate the cause of dehydration. Like, is it from vomiting? Is it from sweating too much? Is it from not drinking enough water? Or a big cause can be from diarrhea, especially with our pediatric populations. Lastly, we want to monitor the vital signs, like a low blood pressure, which is usually a common finding, as well as a thready rapid pulse. Urine that is dark and has high specific gravity, as well as labs that are high and dry, so high BUN. Now, when we start to add more fluids to the body, we need to monitor for signs and symptoms of fluid volume overload. The most common symptoms are high blood pressure, JVD, basically jugular vein distension, bounding pulses, and all the rest. R is for reposition slowly. So encourage your client to change their position slowly when standing up. The last thing you want them to do is stand up too quickly and pass out. Now, this commonly happens with something called orthostatic hypotension basically low blood pressure upon standing up. All right, guys, that wraps up our lesson here. We'll see you in the next video.